welcome to the Courage to Rise show. I feel it's so honored and privileged to have Whitney Freya here with us on the show to share her wisdom and mindset tools with us. And Whitney is an expert in inspired living, uh, providing practical tools and practices to free your mind from those limitations and worries and stress and scarcity to create you know, a life that's filled with like balance and joy and just helps you light yourself up from the inside out, which we all can benefit from. Um, you're, she's also an author of three books and one that I'm love, so in love with and obsessed with is um, Rise Above, which is so aligned with Courage to Rise. And it's so beautiful. Look at that. It's just a gorgeous book and has all your art in here and exercises and Oh, it's just like, it's like everything in one book. So I just love it so much. And I created this show because I had, you know, I had my own personal experiences with um, loss and trauma and, you know, from my past. And then later in my life, um, some things happened. It just seemed like one thing after the other came up and it just felt like what's going on. And I started my spiritual journey and awakening because I thought, oh, I planned everything right. Everything got to where it needed to be. And then it just like exploded and fell apart. And um, I'm so blessed now that it did <laughs> in a sense, because I'm here now and I get a chance to talk to you. And I know that there's a lot of people out there who have things happen um, unexpectedly because that's life. And like, how did, how are they able to you know, overcome these challenges or adversity and find joy and, and balance in life. Um, or if they're going through a lot of stress because life can be stressful. Um, but it's also meant to be lived fully. <laughs> so that's why um, I invited you because I just, I, I, I love what you're doing. And so I'd love for you to share a little bit more about how you got to where you are now and starting this and, <laughs> and, and your, um, your retreats and training and all of that. So. Oh, fun. Well, Katie, thank you for in inviting me to be here. And I love what you're doing. Courage to rise. I just did a 21 day courage, um, creative courage challenge before the holidays. And I really feel like courage is something that, um, has kind of gotten, um, forgotten or, pushed aside and you know everyone is really encouraged to play it safe and to value security and make decisions based on that no matter what and so what we've created is a reality where most of us are so afraid to make a mistake or to fail um, that we keep ourselves in the known um, which inevitably you get kicked out of which is where <laughs> what you were just talking about, you know? Um, I mean, we come here to learn and grow and expand and experience life on this planet. And so if you're hanging out in comfort zone land, or sometimes, you know, there can be a lot of emotional stress and tension when you're not growing or, you know, taking steps forward um, out of fear. It, so the universe is lovingly, even though it doesn't feel like that sometimes, going to really encourage you to get out there. And, um, and I think that's, you know, I would never wish trauma or, you know, anything horrible on anybody, but most of us can look back on those most traumatic times and realize where we are more compassionate because of that, or more expressive because of that, or a better parent because of that. Um, and so ultimately those experiences are here to love us. And I think right now this is so timely because this year is all about transformation. And so it's all about how can I stay open and receptive and willing to answer the call that I get to live my life a little bit differently, to redefine myself, to let go of some roles or other people's expectations I've took on and really honor my own. So we're all going to be called into some flavor of redefining ourselves. And <laughs> oh, I love it. Hey. Right? Oh, I got my oh, dance my dancers back here. Um, it's going to happen to all of us. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to stay open and ride the wave rather than fight it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. I love that your your boys are those your boys. Well, one of them, the first one. <laughs> okay, one of them. That's right. And okay. the basketball team. Yeah. Well, they become your boys. Uh, right. Exactly. Uh, they are partly my boys. Yeah. For sure. 
So it's so true though, like, you know, transformation, I love it, 2020, your clear vision, you know, your vision for your future. Um, I really feel like that's what's coming up and like living in your authentic self and, you know, not playing it safe necessarily because it doesn't always work out that way. Like you hope it would playing it yeah. safe and um, yeah. And to expand, expand and grow and possibility. So, um, yeah. and I'm well, I was curious about fear because that is one of the things that keeps people stuck is yeah. they say, okay, that's great and all, but I feel this, I still have the fear and I can't move past the fear of maybe someone wants to take a leap of faith and, and go into, a, uh, start their own business or, or a new job or a relationship after several failed relationships, right. uh, you know, or just, you know, starting doing something that they've always wanted to do, but didn't think they would be good at. Absolutely. Um, so what do you, what are your suggestions for someone? Yeah, in that? yeah I have so many suggestions. Um, so first of all, let me just mention that um, a little bit of my story is I opened an art center in 96 in Nashville, Tennessee, um, literally opened the doors, like bought this crack house, renovated it, opened the doors, still had never painted on a canvas. Right. Like I went to the art store. I'm opening an art center. <laughs> I hadn't taken an art class since early high school, but I was like overwhelmed with this connection between the fact that when we develop these creative muscles making art, it ripples out and helps us create more of what we want into the art that is our life. And so I was talking left, right brain back then and all that, but I left um, a secure straight commission sales job <laughs> to buy the crack house, open an art center with zero art background. And um, there were a lot of scary moments. I mean, I remember crying, just being like, what am I doing? Um, and at the same time, it felt like um, there was a train that had just slowed down next to me and I was being invited on this train of promoting and liberating our creative spirits and I could get on or not like it was going right and so it was scary because it was very unknown for me but really what it felt like is it had a life of its own mm -hmm. now that did not mean that I was not like living hand to mouth and just making ends meet for years, you know, learning through this. But what that did is it kept me in such a vulnerable state hmm. every month. Like really, okay, just how is, are all these bills going to get paid, you know? <laughs> and so I was in this constant state of surrender, a constant state of having to get out of my own way because me, myself, and I had like nothing you know, no credentials, no training, nothing that would, that I could like hold on to. So I had to constantly just show up in the present moment. And, um, and it's because I knew in my heart, mm -hmm. right, that this is what I was meant to do. And like I said, it felt like that, that Liz Gilbert, you know, that ideas are looking for hosts. Like I had been given an idea that was going to happen one way or another, whether I was with it or not. And I wanted to be with it. Mm -hmm. So I think for courage, you know, and this is why I teach painting is because most people are afraid of painting at the blank canvas. Like almost any of you listening, if I just passed you a blank canvas through the screen, I'm sure I'd hear a chorus of like, oh, no, 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 I can't even draw a straight line. Like, oh, get it away from me. Right. And here's what I have to say. First of all, do you really think there's something scary <laughs> at that blank canvas? And second, Whatever it is that's triggering that level of fear for you is also keeping you from creating change in the art that is your life. Mm -hmm. And so the canvas makes visible where we get excited, where the inspiration is, and where we get stuck, where our inner critic or inner perfectionist or, you know, that um, voice that shut you up when you were little or the art teacher that told you you weren't good, um, whatever that is, you can... Um, create through that at the canvas it becomes like a mirror and you can practice being wild and free you can practice being detail oriented which is sometimes my um, <laughs> what I do at the canvas um, but you can practice it at the canvas and you're elevating to that creative frequency and creating into your reality what you want um, it makes very visible we talk about mindset your mindset becomes like in your face when you're painting mm -hmm. it's not working okay so you're giving your way your power your power to the it like this mysterious you know canvas paint 
thing that is supposed to do it for you. Um, so there are other places in your life where you are allowing it, whatever it is or whatever that is or he or she is to keep you from creating what you want. So, um, so, so my journey has been one that has been absolutely inspired by helping people to overcome fear. And ultimately it's got nothing to do with painting. Like it's about living. Yeah. <laughs> I just use the canvas because everyone's so damn afraid of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's so true. When I, um, after I went through a divorce and I remember like just feeling like so lost and, you know, just so many things. I mean, it's a loss. It's a grief whenever mm -hmm. you lose a relationship or divorce or whatever. And I hired an art therapist. And one of the things she said, I remember she came to my house and we started on this canvas creating something. And I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Even though I had art background, I still felt like it's gotta be perfect. You know, it's gotta be this and that. And, and I made a mistake and I said, oh no, we gotta start over. And she said, uh, I, no, we're not starting over. <laughs> she said, actually, you'll find that some of the mistakes just like in life are the most beautiful. Mm -hmm. You'll look back at the canvas and the mistake that you see is like, wow, that's, that's what makes this picture, what makes this, this art beautiful and unique, which I thought was, is true. Like what you're saying about life, like it's, yeah. it's what we were creating life. We are the creator of our life. As you say in here, we are yes. creator of our experience. Yes. Yeah. The creator. Yeah. I am the sole creator of my experience. The way we do anything is the way we do everything. Yes. And both of those sentences are quotes like I'm Abraham Hicks in Law of Attraction. Like that's their, you know, the whole mantra is I am the sole creator of my experience. And what I just know to be true energetically is as a culture, as a human family, like holy clamoly, we've got so much change to create on this planet. Mm -hmm. And to have any of us, to have the millions of us that are still saying, oh, I'm not creative. I can't even draw a straight line. Like that has got to stop right? Like it is not serving us. Every single person is creative. You're creating all the time and you're creating with your words and your ideas and the way you walk into a room and your relationships and your businesses. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think you are, that just means you're creating it without awareness. Yeah. And we don't want to be creating our life without awareness because then you're allowing these outside forces and old voices and old, you know, conversations around the kitchen table to dictate your reality right now. Let's bring you present and learn to live as a life artist, creating your reality in each and every moment, and then learn how to focus your mind and your attention and intention on what you want, right? Like you would never go to the canvas like, oh, I have this great idea for this horrible, sad, ugly, disgusting thing I want to paint. Yeah. <laughs> like you would never do that. But we do it with our thoughts all the time. That's what worry is. That's what complaining is. Mm -hmm. Right. You're painting pictures in your mind of what you don't want. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know there will be a day where little kids will be like, mommy, what are they talking about? And I was like, Oh, that's something we used to do. It was called complaining. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We don't kids do will be like, wow, that's dangerous. Like they're just talking into reality what they don't want. Like, exactly. yeah. Yeah. We didn't realize back then how creative we were. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true because you create your reality. You create your, you know, and sometimes that's a hard concept for people to understand. Yes. Uh, but there's, you know, I love how you bring life. I just love this book so much. But I love how you bring to life, life in this book and then exercises on how to, like one of them I just want to share because it was just called to me. I shared it with our leadership group that, that I'm in um, is accessing new freedom. You know, we've had it all backwards. And you share here your opportunity to rise above whatever is trying to pull you down in your life is proportionate to how you create a new sense of unity within your awareness. And so you end up co-creating your life as you desire, rising above any limiting beliefs, circumstances, or challenges. So using your intuition and imagination, but we are so used to just using our logical mind that that keeps us stuck. Because Absolutely. it's only one part of our brain that we're accessing. We're not accessing the other part, which creates our reality. Yes. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, neuroscience is fascinating and it absolutely supports, you know, the predominant modes of thinking, right? Like we have a predominant logical fear-based way of thinking, and then we have a predominant intuitive love-based way of thinking. And what we've gotten backwards is that we get this new idea, you know, we get all excited or, you know, just even, oh, I want to go do that or try that or eat that or buy that or whatever it is. But we get that like, just surge of energy and enthusiasm. And then what we've been taught to do is turn to that logical linear left brain that's filed away all of your experiences up until now. And we ask it permission to do something different. Mm -hmm. All it can reply to anything different is no, because they've, you've, you've got nothing in your file cabinet that's based on that. And so we go back, you know, to our right brain, intuitive, creative side and say, sorry, you can't do it. You know, and that's why, you know, just all of you fill in the blanks, right? Like we all grew up with a certain level or handful of dreams that were like, get real sister, you know, like that's not going to happen. So, so what happens is you learn to recognize where the energy is, mm -hmm. like where your passion, your heart's calling you, the, the right way to um, be in a situation that might be scary or traumatic, how to show up in your power, how to stop giving away your power. You'll know in your heart, in your bones, you'll feel it and you'll know what to do. And then you turn to that logical linear side and you said, here's what we need. Mm -hmm. Here's what we need to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And it loves that kind of um, assignment because that's what it's meant to do. You know, to go back through like, oh, we've got this contact, you know, we can do this. Someone owes you money, you know, like whatever it goes through and it will find what you need to, to do realize this inspiration that you've received. But if we're filtering everything through our logical fear-based mind, um, we're going to stay really stuck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't have any innovation in this. Right. We wouldn't have innovation we wouldn't have the internet for us to do this if somebody didn't say, you know what, that's a crazy idea, but I'm going for it because my heart and my intuition is telling me that this is what we need. Exactly. And this is, this, is, this is your calling because we all have, I believe we all have a purpose and a calling and, mm -hmm. you know, but oftentimes we don't listen to it. And so, because our logical brain says, or someone else says, uh, well, that's crazy. Like you should, you know, you shouldn't do that. You should go over here and play it safe. And so, right. And, and here's something really important for you all to ask yourselves. Like, if you are really here, if you feel like you are here to fulfill a purpose, you know, like there's got to be something more, you know, all of that energy, it's not going to be a logical journey. Like, it's not going to be logical. It's not going to always feel comfortable. And you wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of like open up, like you signed up for a life of expansion. I call it the spiral path. I'm sure several other people do too, but it's one that is constantly cycling outward into the unknown, into what's new. You are not content and you all probably know times in your life where you tried to reel yourself in. This is enough. This is okay. You know, I don't need any more or, or or not leave the job or whatever you know we all know those situations they feel horrible right like you probably got sick I know I had lots of chronic issues um, in my marriage encouraging me to <laughs> you know to move on so yeah. um, so your your body and your heart know the truth of a situation it's your mind that talks you out of it and so we've got to get um, more aware of how our, our minds, how our psyche works, you know, that we've been conditioned to look at things from a fear-based perspective. And it is very possible just through repetition, okay, how is this here to love me? Realizing when you're in fear, how is this here to love me? What are all the ways that this could be working out perfectly? Um, and you just train yourself and you start small. You start when like you were super excited to eat that yogurt and you open it up and there's mold. Like what are all the ways this is here to love me? You know, start, start on the easy stuff when the hot water runs out or, you know, you get snowed in or whatever it is. Like, how is this here to love me? And then you work up and then when, you know, the big things happen, it's like, okay, how is this here to love me? I just had a client who got a breast cancer um, diagnosis and she's sitting in the doctor's office and she's like, okay, all right, we got it. You know, and he's like, what are she, you know, the doctor was like, how are you not? And her mother's freaking out. And she's like, it's going to be fine. Yeah. 
because she is living first as an infinite being who's second having a human experience, living from love rather than fear. And now she's excited for how she's going to be able to help others through this journey. And the doctor's already amazed at the progress. And, it, you know, it's so possible to really harness um, your thinking to go in the direction of what you desire. It's also called coherent consciousness, <laughs> where all of your thoughts are lined up in, in alignment, like in harmony with what it is you want, right? Oh. And we know the opposite. You know, I really, really want to do this, but I can't. I'm not good. And we reinforce those thoughts rather than like, wait a second. I've done lots of different new things, you know, and, and to reinforce what we do want with our thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious that you mentioned this um, because I'm wondering, you know how sometimes that the, you, oh, I just noticed this, I've become more aware now, conscious, is that the, you know, you're going down this path and you decide to make a shift and it may be listening to that calling in your heart and saying, okay, I know logically it doesn't make sense, but my heart's saying, go this direction. And then you go that direction and things are going well. And then there's a block or, or something comes up. They say, oh, well, maybe I'm supposed to go back. You know, like there's all this self-doubt that comes in. But then when you go back to the path that you're on, that you think you're going to go, then something happens. It's like, no, 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 that's not. So the universe can get kind of confused. Is that is that what happens? Or is it just supposed to challenge you so that you can move to that next level? Yeah, so that first path you talked about was one where you were stretching yourself. You were doing new and different things, right? Yes. So... Just because the universe wants us to do it doesn't mean it's just like handed to you on a silver platter, right? Like there's still the learning curve. And again, we wouldn't have it any other way. So yes, you're right. What we interpret as, oh, see, it's not working. And yeah. I was talking about this last night with my training group because several of them have been promoting themselves as creatively fit coaches, which is a training I do. And it's now a year later or two years later. And they're like, Whitney, you told us if we just kept going, we just kept sharing, kept teaching workshops, even if one had two people, then the next one had 12. And now I have so many opportunities. I don't even know what to do with them all. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, yes, because otherwise we get stuck right away. Something isn't going to go perfectly because it's all new. Yeah. And there's something better, you know, you're being guided into like better ways to do it, you know, oh, no, you can up your game, sister, like do it differently. And, um, and so if we just keep going through that, not losing sight of the conviction and the energy and the heart that called us on that path in the first place, you will get there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and you're right. If you go back to the first path, back to the comfort zone, you get the obstacles there because the universe is like, oh, hell to the no. We already got you going this other direction. Like, get out of here. Right. You know? <laughs> Just like you would do a small child, right? Teaching them like how to walk up the stairs properly or something. So, um, so yeah, we just have like become so afraid of making a mistake and so afraid of criticism, so afraid of being rejected that we stay in the known no matter what, you know, until life kicks us out. I call it the cosmic two by four. Personally, I've gotten it multiple times. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've learned like, okay, I don't need the cosmic two by four. I'm totally open. Like, just let me know. Um, but the cosmic two by four is where we've asked nicely. We've asked nicely. Kabam. Now you've got to do it. Yes. Oh, yes. That happened to me this last year. I was literally like, you know, a, a car crash. Like literally, it's right. like, no, you're stopping. Like, no, go the other direction right. and you go. And it's just like, okay, I'm, I hear you. I listen now. You know, it's like you keep, it's like, it's time. Time is now right. to move exactly. forward. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I help people develop a personal painting practice because when you're spending time regularly, even if it's 20, 30 minutes, five, four or five days a week, um, you're aligning with that creative frequency. You've overcome a major fear. You're focusing on what you want. You're developing this self-awareness. I mean, the canvas just becomes a mirror. Every time I sit down to paint, I'm like, I've got my journal handy. I mean, I'm just between the downloads and the self-awareness I'm getting. It's, it's really awesome. It feels very supportive. Um, and when you're at that creative frequency that you develop at the canvas with the way I teach, which is just super simple, you know, it's just uh, kind of unteaching in a way, um, you will 
raise your vibration, you will start naturally looking for possibilities and options. Whereas you before started listing off, oh, these, this is just another reason why this isn't going to work for me. Um, your intuition gets dramatically heightened. So you're um, understanding the prompts that you're getting before the car crash right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just like, let's avoid the car crash and the cancer diagnosis and the divorce and the job and, you know, bankruptcy and all of that. Let's just not do that. And instead paint, like <laughs> seriously, seriously, people, I'm not kidding. Um, and, and then consciously create the art that is your life from that place, right? Yeah. Instead of giving away your power, thinking everything else is power over you or, allowing yourself to paint pictures of horrifying scenes of bankruptcy and you're sleeping in the gutter and you know like come on we can do better we can we can we can and I love I love taking people on this journey <laughs> oh I love it I love it so yes I, I uh, you know it's it's amazing the work that you're doing and I want to also share you you have a certification program that right up and I want to know I mean, I I want to know more about it because I want to get it. <laughs> right? You, I, you yeah, would love yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So since um, for the last 10 years, I've been certifying creatively fit coaches. And bottom line is they are everyone from life coaches, business coaches, yoginis, Reiki masters, access bars, you know, facilitators, um, shamans, uh, you know, dancers. Um, we are healers. We're here to help humanity expand into their wholeness. You know, we're not just pain bill machines. We have all these other ways to express ourselves and to create joy in our lives. And through a regular personal painting practice that follows kind of a trajectory where you're learning this process. First, you learn that the canvas isn't scary. You have nothing to be afraid of. Then you learn how to allow it to be a mirror for you. So you're developing this self-awareness and witnessing, you know, where you get stuck, where your inner critic really you know, leaps out, um, and where you stop. Um, and then it becomes, um, a law of attraction tool where you're able to consciously create into reality more of what you want, right? Thereby building the energy, attracting it, focusing your attention, you know, instead of spending the 20 minutes a day, just imagining, visualizing, which nobody does come on, you know, you can do it at the canvas really easily. Um, and then there's the shamanic painting level of the practice where you're really, you're bringing in literally anchoring in, uh, frequencies that come through these portals. Mm -hmm. So it is a magical carpet ride and creatively fit coaches are trained by me personally to use these processes um, with their clients and um, through teaching workshops and online programs and everything that, you know, we all do. Um, we share the fact that there is a new creative paradigm that is about creating the art that is our lives and the invitation to live as a life artist. And we take you kind of like getting you physically fit. We get you creatively fit. So the training is 10 months long and it's all online and live classes and it's completely transformational personally. Um, and there's a lot of business training as well so that um, you are earning extra income doing this glorious, fun work. Um, so yeah, you can learn more about everything, of course, at my website, WhitneyFreya.com. And I have a free gift. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, the free gift is the Life Artist Masterclass. And you don't even have to paint if you're still scared. Good for you for being scared. Good for you for going to get the free Life Artist Masterclass. You don't have to paint. Um, and by the end of that, you will realize like, ooh, what scares me? is where my greatest treasure is waiting. So, um, but this class is five videos. Um, they're all filmed outside. They're like 10 minutes long and this beautiful PDF and a different sacred symbol with each lesson. So I'm basically teaching you how um, to begin to learn this language of symbols that life artists use. And it's a magical journey in and of itself. So I highly, highly recommend going and doing the life, binge watch the Life Artist Masterclass tonight and you will be much more inspired and expanded at the end. Oh, thank you so much for offering that. Uh, and I want to also mention, I watched something or read something somewhere, I think both actually, now that I recall, that creativity is the most important, they're saying that, that that's the most important skill for mm -hmm. success, for innovation, for business, for life. And so this is just such a gift that you're giving 
everyone here. So definitely try it, you know, just try it. I mean, there's no risk in just jumping in and trying something new. Um, or if it's something like some people may have been into art or painting in the past and then just said, oh, I don't have time for it or making excuses like to get back into it because it really, it really like feeds our soul and our spirit. Absolutely. Oh, and I've done corporate workshops. If any of you have companies, you want me to come and shake it, shake everything up. It is a blast. You end up with these huge murals that everyone did together. So much fun, especially like you got people in there who are super like, Whoa! and they end up being like the biggest painters at the end. It's hysterical. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time and um, for being here. It's been an honor. Um, and they know now everyone knows how to connect with you. Okay. And and so, um, so thank you all for joining us. We'll be having another show um, tomorrow. So stay tuned and um, have a wonderful day and take a moment today to embrace your creativity and create abundance, love, whatever it is that you want in life as Whitney was sharing, because we are the creators of our reality and our life. So thank you. I have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank Thanks, you. Katie.